in this video we will uh, look at a few basic things about file handling in C. This is a vast topic in itself and we will see just the basics of this. So, let us begin by describing what are files. Now, you would think that uh, the most natural way to define what a file is, it is a set of bytes, a collection of bytes sitting in secondary storage like maybe your hard drive, maybe your uh, CD ROM drive or DVD drive or something, I mean it is on a secondary storage device. But um, the actual description is that any addressable part of the file system in an operating system is a file. Now, this includes extremely bizarre strange things for example, slash dev slash null in Linux this stands for nothing. So, if you write to slash dev slash null it is like discarding the data. Similarly, slash dev slash urand this is the random data device if you read from here you will get random data. Slash dev slash audio is speakers. So, if you write some data into that it will uh, be heard on the speakers and of course, plain old data files for example, you in your home, home directory you may have slash home slash don to slash input dot text. So, input dot text is just uh, a collection of bytes. So, we will not bother with defining what a files is, but uh, it is something that can be manipulated using the file system interface. So, you can open a file system uh, interface to that file, you can uh, read from that file, you can write into that file, you can close that file and so on. Okay. Now, recall that in one of our earlier lectures, I said that there are three files by which are available by default to all C programs. So, these are standard input uh, stdin, this is associated usually with the keyboard and this is where scanf, getchar, getS, these kind of functions get their input from. It has file descriptor 0. Similarly, standard output std out is where printf, putcar, putes all these functions output their data to. This is usually visible on the terminal on the screen. This has file descriptor 1. We also have a third cons uh, third file which is known as standard error. This is the standard error console and it has file descriptor 2. Usually you can print error messages to std err. We have not seen how to print error messages to std err so far, we will see that in this video. Now, how do you uh, read input using standard file descriptors, but from sources other than keyboard and so on. So, for example, if you are running a dot out and you want to take the input not from the keyboard, but from an input file. You can say slash a dot out less than input file. This says that the input is coming from the file input file. So, this is the input file as the source instead of the keyboard. Okay. Similarly, if you want to redirect, so if you want to redirect the output to a particular output file instead of the screen, you can say slash a dot out greater than out file. Uh, so, this will use the out file as the output instead of the terminal. And if you want to output something uh, the error messages to error file, you can say slash a dot out 2 greater than error file, 2 stands for the standard error console. So, if you say redirect this to this uh, file, you will say ok. Uh, the standard output should get the standard output messages and the standard error messages should go to err file. Okay. So, Linux gives you some uh, facilities to take uh, input from other files uh, using the standard input and the output. So, what you say is that instead of the standard input, you can use these less than greater than arrows in order to redirect input from some file or output to another file or error to another file. So, this is the facility that Linux gives you, but consider the general situation when you have a program you want to read the input from multiple files and maybe output to multiple files. So, this is the general situation we just saw how to take input from one particular input file, how to output to another input output file 
using uh, the redirection operator, the less than and the greater than operation on Linux. So, the redirection mechanism is provided by the Linux shell and is not part of the C programming language. So, is there a way to do it in C itself rather than uh, using the facilities of Linux? So, can we read from other files other than the standard keyboard? Can we write into other files other than writing onto the screen, standard output and so on? So, we look at the general scheme of file handling in C. Uh, all these functions that I am going to talk about are in stdio.it it itself. So, you do not need to include any more files. So, if you want to open the file for reading or writing etcetera, we need to first open the file. The three standard files std out, std in and std err are available to the program. Any other file you have to open the file and the function to do that is f open takes two uh, arguments name and mode and we will see what these are uh, soon and it returns something called a file pointer. Now, file pointer is a pointer to a structure and that structure contains a lot of information about the file. For example, where is it situated, the current position being in the uh, being read in the file. So, maybe you have read 1000 bytes and you are about to read the 1001st byte. So, it has that information and various uh, uh, maintenance information about the file. Now, in order to read or write into the file, you can use f scanf or f printf. These are the analogs of scanf and printf, which allow you to write to arbitrary files. Uh, it, it takes uh, three arguments, uh, at least two arguments. Uh, the first is the file pointer, where you want to write the file, where you want to read from the file and so on. And then uh, there is a format specifier, just as a normal scanf or normal printf and then further arguments. Okay. So, the difference here is that Whereas, scanf and printf started with the format specifiers, we have an additional file pointer in the beginning. So, compare with the scanf and the printf, the first argument fp is missing. This is because scanf just assumes that uh, the file it has to read from is the standard input and printf assumes that uh, it has to print to the standard output. And to close the file, you say f close fp. And uh, notice the way the uh, f scanf, f printf and f close work. They do not take the file name as input, only the f open takes the name of the file as input. Whatever f open returns the file pointer, those are the arguments to uh, f scanf, f printf and f close. Okay. This is because once it is, uh, once a file has been opened, all the information that scan, f scanf, f printf and f close need are already in the structure pointed to by fp. Now, let us write uh, a very simple program. This takes two files, uh, the, it takes the names of two files and what it does is um, it first prints the contents of the first file and then prints the contents of the second file and these will be output to the standard output. What is the algorithm? It is very simple. Uh, you have to first read the file names, then open file 1 if open fails, we exit. Um, now, if print the contents of file 1 to std out, after you are done, you close file 1, then you open file 2, check whether open has succeeded. If it has failed, we exit, then print the contents of file 2 to std out, close file 2 and that is it. Okay. So, let us see what uh, each of these steps in slightly more detail. How do you open the file? We open it using a standard call called uh, f open. f open takes two arguments, the name and the mode as character pointers and returns a file point. The first argument name is the name of the file and the name of the file can be given in short form. Suppose you are already in a directory where that file is situated then you can just give the name of the file, for example, input file or you can give the full path name of that file in the operating system. So, for example, input file may be in the directory slash home slash don. So, in that case, you can give the name as 
slash home slash don slash input file. So, this will be the full path name either of this is accepted. Now, the second argument is the mode this is the way in which you want to open the file. So, what are the common modes for example, if you give r this will open the file in read only mode. Uh, this is if you want to just read a file and not write to that file. There are also other situations where the medium itself may not support uh, uh, writing. For example, if you have a CD ROM disk, then uh, you cannot write to that. So, it can only be opened in a read only mode. If you give W, this is the write mode. Now, the first write happens at the beginning of the file. So, if the file already exists it will be overwritten. If a file does not exist, so this is the name of a new new file that we support commonly is known as uh, the append mode you specify that by saying the mode is A. So, if you open the file for append mode then instead of writing at the first location of the file it will look right at the end of the current file. So, if the file does not exist then it will start from the first location if the file exists it will go to the end of the file and start writing from there. So, append does not overwrite the file. We have seen the arguments of f open now let us look at what it returns. If successful f open returns what is known as a file pointer this is later used for f printf f scan f f close as I just mentioned if unsuccessful the file uh, maybe you try to open a non existent file for reading and uh, or um, you try to write to a file uh, which cannot be written to for example, it is a file sitting inside a CD ROM drive and you are not allowed to write to it. So, if you try to open the file in write mode then you have a problem. So, for whatever reason if the file open does not succeed then the f open returns a null and it is always a good idea to check for these errors. So, just try opening a file and always check whether it has returned a null. So, let us write the program that we were discussing which will take two input files and print one file and then print the other file. So, the program is fairly simple we have a main function you have two file pointers f p 1 and f p 2 and then two file names file name 1 and file name 2 you get the input uh, you get the file name 1 from the input you get file name 2 from input using get as functions. Now, what we have to first do is write the contents of the first file. So, try opening the file. So, if f p 1 equal to f open file name 1 r because we just need to uh, Re, uh, read from the file we do not need to write into it. So, open it in R mode if it is successful that is if it is uh, or rather if it has failed. So, if it has returned a null then you just say uh, printf that it has failed and here is for the first time we are seeing uh, how to print to the standard error. Okay. Since std err is any other file uh, you can is similar to any other file you can just say f printf std err and then uh, opening file failed file name 1. So, we try to open file name with file name 1 as the name, but there was some error. So, you print that to the error uh, terminal which is std err. Now, once you do that we will call the function copy file f p 1 to s t d out. So, here is a function that we will write which will copy from a source file to a destination file and what it takes is uh, what it takes are pointers to those files. Once you are done you close the file one and then you repeat the whole process the exactly the same process for file 2. So, try to open it if there is an error you print the error message to s t d e r r then copy the file from f p 2 to s t d out and finally, close the file. Once you are done you can return from main. So, now what is left is what is this copy file function right. 
So, let us look at the copy file function. Uh, now, there are two ways to start writing um, any function which takes files as arguments. One is you can take the file name as the argument itself and uh, within the function try to open the file. Okay. So, you will get a file pointer and you can start reading from the file using f scanf uh, and writing to the file using f printf. This is possible. It is somewhat more convenient to say that I assume that the files are already open and I am getting the file names as the pointer using file pointers. Okay. So, this avoids duplication of work the main does not have to open the file and then uh, every function has to open the file again and again. Instead what you can just say that the I assume that the caller function has already the file open and I will just take the file pointer as the argument. So, let us look at this function it is a void function. So, it does not return anything it just performs an action its name is copy file takes two arguments uh, from f p which is a file pointer to of the to the source file and to f p which is a file pointer to the destination file. And what does the function do we have a character c and uh, here is a function we will uh, see in a later video, but right now it just checks whether uh, from f p has encountered enter file. So, f e o f just tells you whether uh, you are done with uh, the from file. So, if you are not done with the from file what you do is you scan one character from the from file. So, f scan f from f p percentage c and c. So, this will read one character from the source file from f p and read it into the variable c. Now, what we have to do is to print that to 2 f p. So, you say f print f 2 f p percentage c comma c. So, this is exactly like scan f and print f, but taking uh, one extra argument. So, in the case of scan f it just says what is the source file that is the file pointer argument. In the case of f print f you have to take the destination file which is 2 f p that is the extra argument and that is the function.